Over the last few years, OnePlus has almost nailed the formula for its phones. High-end specifications, a design that works, and a price point that is substantially lower than competing flagships. The one area where the competition still has a leg up, however, has been the camera. With the OnePlus 5, this was one of the key areas for innovation for the company, and enter the dual camera module and its iPhone-esque implementation. Now, dual cameras aren't exactly new. The LG G6 has the secondary wide-angle camera that can get some stellar shots in the right scenario. Huawei 2 has implemented a secondary monochrome sensor that manages to finagle a lot more details in the shots. OnePlus, however, has opted for a secondary telephoto lens in the same vein as the Xiaomi Mi 6 and the iPhone 7 Plus. And this enables a depth of field feature that is often called the portrait mode. Let's take a closer look. As you flip over the body of the phone, you'll notice the dual camera module towards the top left corner. Set in a camera eyelet of sorts, the two camera sensors sit proud of the frame. The primary camera is a 16 megapixel shooter with an f1.7 aperture lens. The lower aperture effectively lets in more light and lets you shoot better even in less than ideal lighting scenarios. The secondary camera has a 20 megapixel sensor with an f2.6 aperture lens attached to it. Switch on the camera and at first glance, you won't spot anything special. The camera performs similar to what you'd expect and you can simply tap the shutter button to take a photograph. If you observe closely, you'll notice the addition of a few more buttons and toggles. Tapping the one will instantly switch the camera to the telephoto lens which has twice the reach of the primary camera. In good lighting, this telephoto lens comes in very handy while trying to capture distant action. You no longer have to depend on the much inferior digital zoom which works by cropping into the image and thereby degrades the picture quality. Where the magic really lies however is in the portrait mode. Swiping up takes you into the portrait mode in the camera where it helpfully points out that the phone should be at a distance of between 1 to 6 feet from the subject at which point a green depth of field signal activates. Let's talk about picture quality. In the standard mode, the 16 megapixel sensor resolves good details but there is still a fair amount of noise in the images. Especially when you drop to a low light scenario, the lack of optical image stabilization really hurts. The camera can't keep the shutter open too long as it would result in blurry photographs. The camera also exhibits a very strong noise reduction that results in a somewhat soft image. In terms of color reproduction, the camera captures natural looking shots that are quite true to the real deal. Some users might find this unappealing compared to Samsung's brand of slightly oversaturated shots, but it is trivial to edit this in your favorite app. In telephoto mode 2, there is no optical image stabilization and every jitter appears more pronounced. The f2.6 lens can't resolve as much light and low light shots are far from ideal. Focusing speeds too are not that great and in telephoto mode, we often had to repeatedly tap the camera screen to make sure that the object was in focus. There's a lot of room for improvement as we noticed and photographs in the telephoto mode exhibited overblown highlights and generally a very constrained dynamic range. Finally, let's talk about the all-important portrait mode. In short, it works well for the most part. As long as you're standing at the recommended distance, the phone usually manages to create a natural looking pseudo bouquet around you. Since there is still a lot of software trickery in place to make this happen, the results can be quite hit or miss and many a times you might find the bouquet boundaries overlapping with the subject. With objects, this gets a lot worse but we can't really blame OnePlus for this. It is an early science and to their credit, the portrait mode is well meant to be used with portraits. The mode also requires a lot of light to work well, so don't expect to get very good shots in low light situations. With the OnePlus 5, the company seems to have taken two steps forward and one step back. The camera quality is more than adequate and results are a modest but certain step up from the OnePlus 3 and 3T. As long as you're looking at the photographs on your phone, you'll certainly be satisfied with the results. The dual lens system too works. To be sure, it is clearly a first generation product and needs a lot of software optimization. Then again, with the hardware in place, it is not hard to continuously improve the software end of it. What does irk us is the lack of OIS that makes taking photographs in dimly lit situations an exercise in frustration. This also has an adverse effect on videos, wherein electronic image stabilization just doesn't work as well. All in all though, the OnePlus 5 has all the ingredients and most of the performance to make it one of the better camera phones in its category. This was Dhruv Bhutani from PhoneArena.com. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the like button. If you have any questions about the OnePlus 5, do let us know in the comment section.